Hello everyone, my name is Loco and today it is time for a professional match of Zerg versus Terran and we find ourselves on Port Alexander. Spawning here in the southeast corner and playing with the red Zerg drones. He's from South Korea, one of my personal favorite Zerg players in the world. We have none other than Solar. And his opponent spawning in the opposite corner in the northwest position, playing with the blue Terran SCVs. Also from South Korea and likewise one of my personal favorite Terran players, we are looking inside of the main base of Gumiho. Now for those of you that have been subscribed to this YouTube channel for a while, you know that I've casted many, many games in the past between both of these guys already. There's no denying that they are some of the very best when it comes to their respective races. And I think over, over like the last year or so in particular, I've become a big, big fan of Gumiho's playstyle. Now I don't know if he's gonna go for that battle mech kind of army in this game. He's perfectly capable of playing the, the late back mech style as well as battle mech as well as just the straight up bio. But the thing is, in the previous balance patch, the one that um, happened in November a couple of months ago, Gumiho was already before that patch playing a very very heavy focus on Hellion Cyclone and a very active army when it came to playing Terran mech. Now nowadays, for example, someone like Euthermal, but I've seen a lot of other Terran players uh, play that style as well. Nowadays, the Battle Mech army composition has become a lot more popular in the current version of StarCraft 2. The changes to the Cyclone, as well as, for example, the Battle Cruiser, really do allow Terran players to play that kind of playstyle a lot more um, aggressively. And I think since Gumiho already has like a couple years of practice playing that style in the previous patch, considering it only became stronger with the and balance changes, I'm secretly hoping that he's gonna show us how to deal with that Zerg mid-game army. Now, I casted a game recently between this Zerg player, between Solar and Euthermal. In case you haven't seen that one, I highly recommend you go ahead and check it out. I'll go ahead and post a link to it down below in the description of this video. In that game, Euthermal did focus on a really heavy, heavy amount of Cyclones and Hellions. And... Solar, I mean, I, I don't really want to spoil the end result for you, but he, he showed us how you can most definitely deal with that kind of unit composition if you are a Zerg player and your micro is very, very good. Anyways, only time will tell, I suppose. There's no denying, though, uh, that Gumio has been playing that style quite a bit already, but for all we know, at this point, he could decide to transition towards Bio, and uh, all I told you is, is going to be completely pointless. Um, I'm curious to see where this game is going to take us. So Solar is the kind of player that grinds the same strategy over and over and over again. He's very much so a classic Zerg player in that regard. He likes to play the same playstyle hundreds of times if he needs to, and I guess in this case thousands of times when it comes to the build order, just to get it right. He won't really be making a lot of small errors in the early game usually, so we'll see where this game is going to take us. He, dis, uh, he did decide to now go for the Nematized Carapace, and this is a, a relatively new development in the Zerg vs. Terran matchup. So for the longest time, we saw Zerg players pulling two drones out of the gas after starting up the Metabolic Boost upgrade, which is Zergling Speed. However, some Zerg players at this level have been leaving the drones in the gas for a little while longer to go for the Nematized Carapace as well, and that's the Overlord Speed upgrade. So I'm assuming here that Solar is indeed gonna fly in with his Overlord as soon as the upgrade finishes to figure out exactly exactly what is going on. There we go. It's got his race car upgrade. <laughs> All of a sudden it found out that it can move around much quicker and it will indeed find out that there is an armory in the back of the Terran's main base. Obviously he could have scouted for example like a... say for example like a, a fusion core at this point, right? There could be some uh, some better cruiser play as well. Solar though doesn't really have much of an answer for this just yet, so this is the downside of going for Nematized Carapace. You basically lose a bunch of gas in the early game, and that does allow you to go for Zerglings, I suppose, but you don't have Banelings or Roaches or, or anything out just yet. Solar is gonna have to deal with these Hellbats using just the Queens and then Zerglings, as well as one of these Pokey Boys that he's creating right at this point as well. But if there's one thing that Hellbats are really, really good at, it's killing Zerglings, obviously. Now, eventually, the Spinecrawler does finish out, uh, or it does finish up rather. I'm a little surprised Gumiho doesn't try and engage maybe the third base. Regardless, so far the defense has looked quite stellar. The Queens do manage to get the snipe right there on the Medivac. And somehow, some way, I mean, I would have lost the full mineral line right there. Somehow, some way, Solar has already returned back to droning right now. 
This is the kind of thing I wouldn't really recommend if you're not a top-level Zerk, okay? Dealing with Hellbats using Zerklings and Queens is really tricky. It's super easy to mess up. Benchies, by the way, has a follow-up right now as well for Gumiho, so he's not done just yet. He also decided to go for the Cloaking upgrade. And once again, Solar is indeed getting himself those Spore Crawlers at the correct time as well, just in case it would be, for example, a Benchie, but also just in case if it would, for example, be a Liberator. Gumiho, though, not done just yet. He's going to continue onwards with some more pressure. Once again, it's mostly just Zerklings and Queens. I'm still looking at this, and I'm, I'm waiting for a full Mineral Line to get roasted. And speaking of a full Mineral Line that might get roasted, a couple of cheeky Hellions managed to make their way towards the back of the Mineral Line in the natural. The Queens, obviously, were preoccupied fighting the Hellbats here at the third. And while they will be dealt with just fine, already 10 workers end up going down. Now, I don't think that's due to the lack of... Uh, of, of, of roaches or banelings or whatever. That's just really clever play there by Gumiho, correctly reading the situation. And now he's gonna be able to continue piling on the pressure here, microing two of these banshees at once as well. Really cool little play style. Really cool little move. Not a lot of people would do that, right? Well, he's gotta be careful. You don't wanna lose one of those for free. <sighs> two hit points. That's all he needs. Two hit points is all he needs. And man, this is starting to... Uh, it's starting to hurt quite a bit. So, in this matchup, right? Usually, Terran players will get maybe three, four drone kills. And that's kind of what they have to settle on, okay? If you manage to get 16 worker kills, which is what happens right now uh, for this Terran player, it means that Solar is going to have to try and get those workers once again. He's going to have to re-drone up. And that means that any kind of mid-game pushes for Zerg are going to be quite a bit later and quite a bit weaker because of that. So Gumiho decided to take this opportunity to plant down a base at the third already and to start mining the gases here immediately. Let's have a look. So, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. So this is what I was hoping for. He is going to go for the factory follow-up and he is getting himself a lot of tech labs. So this will not also be confirmed here by Solar, but it is indeed going to be that very battle mech follow focused army so this will indeed be a cyclone focused composition i'm pretty sure i mean he could also decide to go for siege tanks but ah, that's kind of fallen out of fashion lately so yeah there we go so back in the day oh man look at this i love this so back in the day um terran players would play mech really really slowly they would add on a command center, land it at the third base, make a lot of siege tanks, make a lot of Thors, and try to, you know, deal a little bit of damage here and there, and eventually max out, and then move across the map. What's happened over the last couple of months is that players have gotten a lot more aggressive. But Gumiho, he's been playing this style for a really long time already. And one of the things that uh, we saw him do a lot, but also, for example, Maru, who's widely regarded to be the best Terran player in the world, um, he has been putting down buildings at the location where they are supposed to start mining as well. So this is really aggressive. If you manage to keep on the pressure with Cyclones and Hellions, and I think he actually planted down the third command center at the third as well, you can continuously build up the CCs where they need to go. So it allows you to focus more actions and, and uh, more time, and obviously when it comes to mining and whatnot, on microing your units and getting the value that you need. But obviously Zerk right now, if they would push across the map, they could easily get the kill on this uh, fourth command center already. I hope he's gonna continue this. But anyways, it's gonna be a Cyclone Hellion Benshee based composition. A really mobile army. Okay. Uh, so just to grab back real quick to the game that I saw Solar play against Youth Thermal. In that match, Solar decided to go for a heavy composition uh, or a heavy focused army based around the Hydralisk as well as Vipers. And it seems like that is what he's going for once again right now. Eight minutes into the game, he already had the Hive done. So he is going to be able to get those Vipers to start accumulating energy. And what you're looking for is to abduct a couple of those uh, a couple of those Cyclones into the range of the Hydras. Hydras can essentially deal with all of his army just fine. I guess eventually the Roach Warren might end up going down here. But, um, oh man, that's a lot of damage that these units are dealing already. But um, regardless, this certainly is a scary unit composition. Because Cyclones, they have this nasty tendency right now after the new multiplayer patch that they can kill units really easily. They can lock on like that and then back off. So I think the lock on range is like 14. However, as long as they are, or, or rather the lock on range is five, but as long as they are locked on, they can continue firing until like a range of 14 or so. So basically Cyclones, 
they can lock onto a target and then back off and deal a lot of damage. They're also super good at sniping hatcheries and whatnot, just because they deal so much damage with every single shot. And one thing that Terran players can then also focus on, and, and that's when I will stop fanboying on this, okay? But they can focus on armor upgrades alone. Since the missiles shoot so very slowly, you don't really need to get yourself uh, the, uh, you know, the research. For the, uh, for the attack upgrades nearly as quickly. Now, that did force a council right there. And actually, guys, there's a fusion core coming up here for Gumiho. Okay, so one of the issues that I had with the game that, that Euthermal played is that he didn't really transition out of Mass Cyclone Hellion. I think, though, I, I don't get too excited. I don't think this is going to be for... Uh, well, it could be for, uh, for better cruisers, but I've got a feeling this is going to be for range liberators. Range liberators, obviously, are, are extremely good. He's got one tech lab right here. Fusion Core does unlock the, uh, I think it's called Advanced Ballistics Upgrade. I mean, he would have to start that up, obviously. But um, it, it does allow the, uh, the Liberators to get a lot more range. Anyways, Liberators are being sent all over the map right now already. Once again, the Terran army is going to start moving forward right there to the base in the center. They will get a couple of those Creep Tumors while they're there, but also the Cancel on that Hatchery. More and more Command Centers are coming up, though. Man, I love this playstyle so much. Dude, look at that. So, basically, at some point, you, you want to start getting rid of some of your SCVs. You don't really want to have 80 SCVs. But you don't really want to do so. And by the way, that's advanced ballistics right there. Uh, you don't really want to do so until you have enough command centers dropping mules. At some point, you can get rid of your mules or, or of your SCVs and replace them with mules instead. So that means the army of Terran becomes so very big. This feels like such a backwards composition for, for, Zor oh, for, for Terran, though, right? Normally, it's the Zerg player that manages to get into this position where they outmine Terran and they can start taking inefficient traits. In this case, though, it is Gumiho who's planting down more and more command centers pretty much all over the map. He's continuously pushing and Zerg doesn't really get any time to breathe. Alright, well, I say that. Solar has been dealing with this really nicely, though, so far. He's got plus two, plus two finishing up right now relatively quick in that regard he's got a solid amount of economy he's mining with about 80 workers and he will be able to get a really strong unit composition uh, that deals with this terran army really nicely the thing is cyclones and hellions are good but they also don't have a lot of hit points hydras they do a lot of damage and with the support of vipers can easily snipe that army it only takes one good engagement for solar to win the game essentially since there's no siege tanks here anywhere, and since I'm also not seeing any Thors or anything along those lines, this, this Zerg army in a head-on engagement should have a pretty good time fighting this Terran army. But I'm looking at this right now. That is a hell... Like, that's a, that's a heavy amount of, of, of Cyclones. Well, here we go. A lot of them will be abducted, and they indeed do get sniped immediately. Hydras will be forced to back up once again. Keep in mind, Hydras did lose 10% attack speed a couple of months ago as well, so that does make them quite a bit weaker when it comes to fighting these kind of units. But um, I guess Solar is going to have to uh, back up right now, yeah, get himself a couple more of those Evo Chambers to continue accumulating energy here on all of those units. Command Center here in the center, though. Oh, yeah, that one will get sniped. There is that damage that uh, the Hydras deal, and they will certainly be able to make short work of that in just a couple of seconds. But I love this, though. So, Gumiho, rather than sticking around on too many of those Cyclones, he's making the transition towards a lot of Liberators as well. And Liberators, of course, phenomenal. Now, I like this a lot, though, for Solar. He's fighting in a concave, and we all know that in StarCraft, the concave always beats the convex, as long as you manage to get that, uh, that even trait. And um, he certainly did get a lot of value there. But already, look at the amount of mining here for Gumiho. He got so many command centers here. How many does he have? Uh, so it's five orbitals and two planetaries. That's pretty intense. And he's actually making more of them, obviously, as well. So normally at this point in the game, right, we see Zerg players out mining Terran. But that's not the case. Gumiho is getting an awful lot here. Plus three a missile has already been acquired. No plus three armor just yet. I think he needs that carapace as well to properly deal with all of this too. 
Anyways, here's once again those abducts, and that's what makes this super scary. Those Liberators in the air, though, they deal so much damage, but I, I think Solar doesn't really care. He's just gonna start pushing forward, abduct a bunch of those Liberators as well. When they do get abducted, obviously, they lose that Siege Up ability temporarily. They're gonna have to be Sieged Up once again. Solar, though, ooh, once again, sniping those units really, really rapidly. The control on those Vipers is really good, and he has mostly been fighting on Creep as well. But normally, at this point, right, in, in I would say, like, classic Terran mech armies, once you beat the army, that's it, right? Terran tries to max out once, and then, like, look at the damage. <laughs> they try to max out once, and then they just sort of, uh, you know, if that army dies, they just sort of lose. But Gumiho has got so much mining going for him right now, he's mostly focused on gas, that he can replace this unit composition just fine. Couple Hellions and Cyclones right now making their way towards the base on the right-hand side. Another hatchery was just acquired by Solar, but that one's not gonna live. And while the Hellions will get cleaned up here eventually, Gumiho is still keeping good track of where his opponent is located. Now, we've seen this before. We've seen this before. In that game between Euthermal and Solar. I, I wonder where this one is gonna settle. I like the fact that a lot of Liberators are being added on here as well. But I'm not sure if they are really getting the value that they are meant to right now. I mean, a lot of them have gone down. They're not cheap units. Now, this hurts. Solar is not on creep with that army, so he cannot retreat. And he is indeed going to lose every single one of those units in just the blink of an eye. At the same time, that hatchery almost, yeah, certainly will not go up. And uh, while that lock-on ability does have a bit of a cooldown, Gumiho uh, is going to try and, I guess, run by right now with those Hellions. So you don't really want to have that many Hellions at this point in the game. You want to just simply uh, get that big, gas-heavy army out. But you can still use those Hellions to drop some of your minerals and also to roast some of your opponent's mineral lines. Look at the amount of Cyclones, man. 21 Cyclones once again. It's so silly, but it's so powerful. So, I want to just emphasize, Cyclones are about as, as expensive as a Siege Tank, okay? They are not cheap units by any stretch. Once again, though, the Liberators in the air will force this Zerg player to back up. And once that happens, immediately the lock-on ability is going to be extremely powerful. Still, though, Solar, he is trading really nicely here. Let's have a look. Units lost twice, interestingly enough. Even though it feels like Terran has thrown away a ton of Cyclones, 47 of them already going down. Zerk is the one that has lost a lot more resources. Both of them, though, have been mining a very even amount, so this is most definitely still everyone's game. But usually, right, when I look at this, Terran Mech is the army that doesn't really mine that much, right? It's a unit composition that doesn't really allow for a lot of bases. Solar, though, it looks like his strategy right here is to mostly just try and outmine his opponent, and then eventually overwhelm. So, he's playing the long game. He's not really looking to end this game right now. He's looking to play the long game. Gumiho, though, once again, manages to snipe a base. And these hatcheries on the outer edges of the map really haven't been up for a while. Once again, a lot of drones end up dying there. That's 64 worker kills at this point in the game. 65, 66. Starting to get a little bit ridiculous, right? And that's kind of the, the problem that I have right here with Solar's unit composition. Sure, it's good if the Terran player eventually mines out all of his side of the map, but... I mean, it doesn't really have that, 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 that punch right now to push through. Hmm. I'm also not sure, though, what Zerg could add on at this point in the game. Oh, look at that concave. <laughs> Cyclones, man, they don't mess around. There we go, the Liberator's up in the air, completely smashing this army. That is, uh, that's kinda, kinda rough. Oh, well, there you go. Free snipes. Ooh, that's a heavy amount of Vipers. I think that's the transition he's looking for right now. Just more Vipers, right? He's got nine Vipers right now. Normally, we see like three to four Vipers. But I guess if you get enough of them, maybe like, um, maybe a lot of abducts, but, uh, abducts, but and also some blinding clouds. I do think that would be quite nice. Maybe some infestors into the mix as well to try and get the neural, par or not the neural parasites, sorry, the fungal growth. Anyways, looks like we are in a bit of an awkward position right here. Solar is going to end up losing this base once again, but at the same time, the planetary fortress here in the center of the map will also be picked off. We also see a lot of Liberators going down right now, and it seems like we have what, what looks to be a bit of a base race. 
Solar sniped a base right here, but the same happened for Gumiho. He already sniped one hatchery, although be it from a base that wasn't really mining in the first place. Another hatchery will now also be killed, but also this one obviously didn't have a lot of mining remaining. And all of a sudden, Gumiho, he's finding himself inside of his opponent's main base. One of the Vipers there does get sniped. Once again, a really good abducts here by Solar. But now with those Liberators on top of the ramp, how are you going to enter? I guess you need to abduct them all. I think you need to abduct them. I think that's the only option, right? There you go. Abduct them all. Still, though, this costs too much time. <laughs> Gumiho is sniping all of those units in the main, but he is stuck. Terran, believe it or not, does not have mass recall, okay? They cannot recall his army out of there. They are going to kill pretty much all of the tech structures that were there, but Gumiho certainly loses a lot as well. At the same time, he's once again committed a reinforcing army here on the top corner of the map. He's gonna start sniping another one of those hatcheries, I think, at the very least, that what it seems like. Man, this is so... Oh, this is insane. Look at that. All of a sudden, the old main base of Solar is gone. Still, though, Gumiho lost a, a really significant amount of units there, and when you think about it, he sniped three hatcheries and some tech structures, but all of those weren't really mining, and there wasn't really, you know, any loss there as far as the, as, as far as the actual unit composition for Solar goes for the next couple minutes. Looks like Sola wants to try and capitalize on this situation right now. He does need those Vipers. Where are they? Okay, there they are coming. They're a little bit late to the party. He definitely does not want to fight this unit composition without those Vipers present. And there they are. Obviously, Blinding Clouds are going to be super helpful. There you go. Shutting down that planetary fortress and also abducting a lot of those Cyclones. I think that Solar may have finally found himself in a bit of an opportunity where he might actually be able to call this an advantage. Big repair, though, using all of those mules on the planetary as well. The planetary is starting to take so much damage and it eventually does matter too. <gasps> it just barely falls, but at what cost? I mean, Solar lost all of his units there. Sure, the Vipers managed to run home, I guess, and they're flying towards wherever they like. They'll find out about this base finally on the left-hand side, but that one's been mining for ages. Solar sees that that base is up, and he GG's out of the game. So the thing is, he didn't have... He didn't have um, a hive anymore, so he couldn't, he couldn't really start up any additional Vipers. <laughs> <laughs> what a game. I thought we were in this one for the long run as well, but then all of a sudden, you blink twice and the game is over. <sighs> I guess that's what happens, right, when you get units that have, like, no hit points, but a stupid amount of damage output. At some point, they will clash, and it will decide the end of the game. Great play there by Gumiho. Much deserved victory. And um, I, I like the fact, so that's why we didn't see your thermal do. I like the fact that Gumiho decided to transition towards uh, a lot of liberators there as well. I'm trying to think what the actual late game composition would be like. I like to think that Battlecruiser have their place in the late game, but uh, I don't know. I think they'll probably just get abducted and killed immediately, but... If you get enough better cruisers out, right? If you have a couple better cruisers, they can make short work of a large amount of Hydras. So I, I wonder if there's like a, an opportunity where at some point we'll see a Terran player maybe taking a bit of a break on the heavy amount of Cyclones, go back towards, say, Hellion production, and then using some of that gas to start producing a couple of better cruisers. Because if you, if you get yourself like four, five, six better cruisers out, they can start making really, really short work of most of those Zerg armies as well. But uh, I guess only time will tell. This strategy is very much so still developing. I hope you enjoyed watching this game. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notifications as soon as I upload more. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile all right. And I will see you once again in the next one.